Temperatures are in the mid-70s in East Rutherford, New Jersey, and this is the Giants training camp report presented by Citizens. It's time for practice number 16 of the summer, and this one will be in full pads once again. Hi again, everybody. Paul Dottino along with Super Bowl champion partner Jeff Fiegels. So glad you could join us for another great day here in Bergen County. Now, Jeff, full pads again because tomorrow they'll be in shells. Then they've got off on Saturday, and preseason game number two is at MetLife Stadium on Sunday night against the Cincinnati Bengals. Again, things are ramping up. They've already had one cut down. Yeah, I know the second game, you know, before there was all the four games during the, the preseason, but now that there's only three, I think the second game becomes very, very important as far as guys trying to make the roster, trying to impress the coaches, doing what they got to do. And more importantly, as we talk about it all the time, Paul, is some of those back-end roster guys studying their playbook on special teams. One of the things that we've got to look for today, there'll be a lot of red zone opportunities. We were told by both offensive coordinator Mike Kafka and defensive coordinator Wink Martindale, they'd like to focus on that this afternoon again as they're getting closer and closer to what they're going to want to do during the regular season. Well, I mean, every day there's a game plan, and obviously it's, as you get closer and closer to the season, the evaluation continues. Again, it's preseason, Paul. It's going to be very vanilla, but at practice out here, they work on certain situations. Like right now, they're working on some kickoff stuff. Uh, special teams is a big component it, once the season starts. These guys, you know, there's not there's 90 guys out here now, but there's not going to be that many. So you got to go and try to find the guys you're going to go to war with. And these are the guys right here that you're going to look at on special teams. Graham Gano has been sensational throughout his NFL career. And certainly since he's been with the Giants, probably even better than that. We were just talking to Thomas McGahee, the special teams coordinator, who has such great admiration for this pro. And of course, now he's got Jamie Gillen, a new punter who will hold for his point afters and field goals. Yeah, you know, we talk about reps and when you have a new holder, the kicker has to become very comfortable with him, not only the holder, but the snapper. So the longer those guys work together, the better off they're going to be. And, you know, Riley Dixon was an extremely good holder, but Jamie Gillian is a guy, he's a veteran. He's been in the league before. He's worked with different kickers. And from what I've seen and what I've talked to both of them, it's become very routine for these guys. And I think they're both comfortable with each other. Gillen was named the special teams player of the week for his effort against the Patriots the other night. I averaged about 48 yards per punt. And quite honestly, after three years with the Browns and uh, just a real cameo with the Bills as part of their practice squad, the Giants picked him up as a free agent during the offseason. He has gotten better since the moment he came onto campus. Yeah, what I like about Jamie, and they call him the Scottish Hammer, loving, loving the nickname, but what I like about him is that he's a worker. He's out there working on his craft, and as a punter or a kicker or a snapper, any of those specialists that we talk about, you know, your days on the field become very long because there's not a lot of things to do, but you can begin to start working on some of the things that'll make you better. And this is what Jamie does. He goes out there, he, he works the whole practice. He works on his drops, he works on his footwork. And what you're gonna see about Jamie is that he's very talented in the sense of where he puts the football. I know he's been working on the directional kicking, something that he has to get better at, and he's gotten better at it, as Coach McGahee will tell you. Recently, McGahee had told us one of the things that he wanted to deal with, and there you got a quick look at T-Mac before we see the rest of the guys running down on coverage is that he wants to get the distance to hang time ratio sure. corrected. He thinks that maybe Gillen could work on that a bit. Explain what he means when the coach says that. Well, the guys in the league nowadays, they have such big legs that they can outkick their coverage. You see that you hear that all the time on the broadcast. Oh, this is a long, tight spiral down the middle of the field. Well, they outkick their coverage. So what happens is the returners a lot of times are better than the 10 guys covering the kick. They're very athletic. So what you want to do is you be able to optimize the kick to the to the distance. So if you have a five second hang time, you're going to want to have a 50 yard punt. That'll give the coverage team enough time to get down there and cover. If it's less than that and it's aired out and there, there's just too much space in between the returner and the and the coverage team, you're going to give up big plays. Okay. That guy right there, Darian Beavers, linebacker out of Cincinnati, number 41, could wind up emerging as a star on specials. Well, you know, it depends on how much he's going to play if he's going to start. I have him maybe getting into that starting role as a young guy, but you're right, Paul. You know, what What you need to work on as a special teams ace, if you will, is that, and it just is just like any other position when you talk about technique and fundamentals, covering kicks is all about technique and fundamentals and also getting in your playbook and understanding conceptually what you're wanting and you're being asked to do. Now, it's always very common to see the backup receivers, the backup defensive backs, and the backup linebackers 
to be the core of your special teams unit simply because of their athleticism. Yeah, and their ability to tackle. Uh, their athleticism is a big one because, like I said earlier, with the returners, they're very good athletes. So, you know, they're going to try to make you miss. And you want to try to get guys on your special teams coverage team that is very position specific, guys that know how to tackle. However, receivers are not guys that know how to tackle a lot of times, but they could be your best. And you're talking about C.J. Board here, number 18. He's a guy that I'm sure that the Giants are looking as a core special teams guy, not only for the big four, which we call the punt, punt return, kickoff, and kickoff return, but he's going to be a primary returner for the Giants hopefully this year. Board is the most experienced returner that the Giants have back on this year's roster, but you mentioned a core guy who can play all of the special teams. He can do kickoff returns, punt returns, punt coverage, and kickoff return coverage. That is incredibly valuable when you're looking at the back end of the roster. Well, the back end of the roster, if you're identified as one of those guys, it's very important, and you and I talk about this all the time, Paul, about not only getting in the offense and the defensive playbook, but you have to understand that why you're here. You know, why are you going to make the 53-man roster? And if you're a back end roster guy, you have to get in that special teams playbook, and you're going to have to not make any mental mistakes and be able to get in a game and, and show the coaching staff that you can do both offense or defense and special teams, whatever primarily your position is. Jason Corbin undrafted rookie free agent running back out of Florida State. And by the way, the coaching staff has raved about this running backs room all camp. They've done great things with the offense. But oh, by the way, Corbin also does things on special teams. At Florida State, he averaged 25 yards per kickoff return. And wouldn't you know it, on three attempts the other night against the Patriots, just about 25 yards per return. <laughs> well, listen, I mean, anytime you, like I said, position specific, right? If you're a running back, uh, you know, as a returner, that's kind of a natural skill set for you. But when you're not having the football in your hand, what can you do on special teams? You look at a guy like Gary Brightwell. He's a guy that was in, in Arizona when he came. He played. He was a star special teams guy. So he comes and shows up, had a nice rookie season last year. He'll be another core special teams guy, along with maybe Williams is another one that we have to look at. Those run, That running back position, talk about a tough position to make this team. You're going to have to shine on special teams to do it. Now, I think it's very interesting to note that of these three backs who are competing on the back end of the depth chart, well, at the moment, you know, they don't have a fullback to go against in terms of the numbers game. Jeremiah Hall, the fullback slash tight end who was on this roster, was cut just the other day in the first cutdown. So that does kind of clear up things a little bit in the backfield if the Giants decide, well, maybe we want to keep an extra running back on the 53? Maybe an extra tight end on the FC 53? Uh, I think that, you know, those kind of those positions go a little bit hand in hand when you're talking about the fullback position, whether you're a running back. Yeah, you can play fullback. But remember, the tight end position is one that teams will keep an extra tight end because they don't want to keep a fullback. So something to watch out for on that final cut day. Look at that tight end position, that tight end room, how many guys might be able to make the roster because being able to do special teams, as we talked about, but also fill that fullback role for the offense for the Giants this year. Now, another name we haven't talked about yet, but he's certainly in the mix. Coach McGee, he said it flat out. Once Kadarius Toney, last year's number one draft pick as a wide receiver, gets cleared for full practice, he will be in the kickoff return mix. Why not? He didn't say anything about the punt return, so I'm not sure if that's part of the plan as well. But he said, hey, there's no doubt. Once he gets back, he's in the competition. Well, it's funny because you know the, the way the, the NFL works today, the kickoffs, there's not a lot of returns because they just guys just kick it out of the, the end zone. But, you know, that's an exciting part of the game. It's, it's one of those things that people like to see. It's an exciting play. And when you guys got, when you have somebody like Kadarius Toney and, and Wandale Robinson or any of those type of little scat guys, they can make people miss and those can become big plays. Who might be a dark horse for you, Jeff? Maybe somebody who you've had an eye on, who you've seen at camp, who you think, you know, people aren't talking about him, but I think he could be a really good core special teams guy. After all, my goodness, you know what that's about. Well, I don't know if this guy, I'm going to mention Colin Johnson, but not, and I think he's having an outstanding camp. As a receiver. Of, as a receiver. But remember, he's, he's one of those guys and he could, you know, he's going to be a fourth, fourth receiver on this team, fifth guy, whatever, but I feel like his size is able to, he can play that gunner position. He can hold up guys. He can also rush the punt and block kicks because he's tall. 6'6". Six, so six. There's a guy that is going to have to play special teams as maybe, and I don't like to call Colin Johnson as a back-end roster guy because I think he's actually competing for one of the starting jobs. 
getting a look at uh, some of the ball security receiving drills a moment ago. Uh, that stuff, obviously very important, yeah. not just as part of the offense, but also on special teams. Well, Can't I, say enough, right, about ball security. You cannot say enough. And by the way, you will not be on that special teams if you are going to give the ball back to the other team. One of the rules of special teams on a punt return is you like to get 10 yards and give the ball back to the offense. Those are the two things that you have to be able to do as a punt returner and as a team collectively. But if you're putting the ball on the ground, you're not going to be able to put your feet on the ground because you're not going to be in there. How difficult do you think it is for some of these returners to remember the high and tight type of carry that will allow you to hold on to the ball when you know, like you see in the drill here, they're trying to punch it out. They're sure. trying to do things to jostle that pigskin loose. That's what practice is all about, okay? Players are put in positions in practice to make them better. Even though if they fail in practice, it's kind of what you want them to do so that they learn. And that's why you do all these drills. There's guys trying to smack the football out of their hands. You know, they're, they're, they're putting hands in front of their faces, doing all these types of things because when you get in the game, it becomes more natural because you've gone through all of these drills. You mentioned uh, earlier about, you know, getting that extra 10 yards on a return to start your offense on their way. I remember Bill Parcells used to tell Phil McConkey all the time, just make a good decision, catch the ball, and get it back to the offense. Yeah. We don't necessarily care about the yards on the return. Well, also, you got to be able to, it's game management, right? Understand what you're, you're at being asked to do. And in that situation, just fair catch the ball, give the ball back to the offense. Now, remember, there's certain situations in games where you need a big play on special teams, and maybe that's when you're going to see a Kadarius Tony or a Wandell Robinson, somebody that can make a big play in the return game when you need it. But, no, but again, ball security, you can, if you make a big play and you give the ball back, it negates it. You know, it's funny, Jeff, a lot of folks say special teams is a third of the game. Other people poo-poo that and say, well, you know what, maybe it's not as much. I know you understand the value for sure because let's not kid ourselves. Special teams is the one unit where you're almost guaranteed to significantly change field position on one play. Sure. And when you change field position and tilt that football field, it means a world of difference. Heck. Where would, where would the Giants have been in that second Super Bowl against the Patriots in Indianapolis if Steve Weatherford had not pinned them so frequently inside the tent? Yep, and you know, I'll tell you, the punt team is, is, is the number one unit as they did not because I was the punter, but they, the special teams coach will tell you that that's the one you have to work on the most because it is by far the biggest field change as far as yardage. And the other thing that can happen is a block kick, and that was another big momentum swing in a football game and not to mention when you're punting you're usually backed up unless you're around the 50 but a big play like that for the opposing team it just totally changes the complexity of the game the, oh, the momentum and things like that so you do not want to give up a block kick we're getting a look here at some of the linebackers there's Aziz Ojolari number 51 and Kayvon Thibodeau number five uh, working a double rush drill Ojolari has been back now to practice for a couple of days uh, again, after some soreness with a lingering hamstring that he came into training camp with, Wink Martindale telling us earlier this morning, he is so quick with his feet, and that's the key to an edge rusher. Yeah, it is kind of funny when you get to, to listen to some of these defensive coordinators, and one, Wink's been around the game a long time. He was telling us that he doesn't even look up. He just looks at the guy's footwork. Right. And when he saw Aziz's footwork, he looked up and said, wow, okay, I like that guy, and I'm, <laughs> I'm happy to have him back. Um, so he'll ease into things a little bit. I'm sure the coaching staff will be able to take a little bit lightly with him because he is coming into camp now, getting ready, but ramp up. But to see those two, Thibodeau and Ojolari, on each side of the defensive line, that's going to be a lot of fun to watch. What's really interesting during these preseason games, and we talk about it all the time, it's a lot of vanilla stuff. You know, even these coaches were telling us today, we're not game planning for these games, but what we are doing is running a lot of our stuff. They're just not planning it out and putting, you know, certain pieces in certain spots under certain situations. They're just running some plays that they want to get a look at. Remember, training camp is all about evaluation. It's not about giving the other team what you're going to do. So, you know, a lot of this stuff is vanilla. You use that word, but it's an evaluation process. So not only are the coaches trying to put players in bad positions, they're trying to get them in the best position so they can evaluate both ways. I want to put this player in a position where if he is in a negative position where there's, how is he going to get out of it? What is his mindset? What is his mental makeup in this play? So there's a lot of things that go into game planning in practice that you'll see some, for instance, the quarterback position. They tell Daniel Jones, hey, listen, I want you to throw the ball into this tight window because if we're in a game, then you've done that over and over, then you're going to be able to be successful. 
We saw uh, Thibodeau knocking over some of the dummies on, on some of his drills here. Uh, Mike Kafka, the offensive coordinator, in talking about the defense and what Wink Martindale's defense has done to his offense during practice, he said, listen, I want you guys to understand, we are putting the offense sometimes in very, very difficult positions because we feel they may face them during the season and it will be easier for them because they practiced against some very nasty positions or, or situations during training camp. And I think that was interesting because a lot of folks just think that training camp practices are supposed to run 100% smooth all the time. When in reality, as Kafka said, we're putting them in nasty spots. Yeah, because you know, nothing's perfect in a game. It never is. In fact, there's more things that go wrong in the game than there are right sometimes. So I think it's how the player comes out of that. And that's all part of the evaluation that I talked about earlier. You know, for the veteran guys, it's a little easier to evaluate these guys because we have something to compare it to, years of experience. But the younger guys that are coming from college at this next level are not used to speed. They're not used to mental warfare, as I call it. The coach is getting in their heads. How are they going to overcome these types of things? And that's what you want to put them in position that Coach Kafka is telling you is that we like to put the players in these types of positions so we can evaluate them. As we continue to look at the linebackers, a moment ago finishing up that drill, you see him 95 to the left of your screen. Quincy Roche, who as a rookie last year, really showed some flashes, and not just in pass rushing skills, but also pretty tough against the run. And as a Miami guy, Mr. Mm -hmm. Fiegels, I know you know him well. Oh, yeah. I'd like to see him make the team again. One thing I like about Quincy Roche, and you talk about defenders and guys at the line of scrimmage and even linebackers, they've got to be able to use their hands. As soon as they become very good with their hands, and they're going to be able to free up a lot of those linemen that are coming at them and be able to make plays. So I think you're watching them do these drills. This is all about hands. If you're watching how they're coming off the ball, see how they're using their hands here. They're using techniques to get around people, and that'll carry over into games. Yeah, the swim move, one of the favorite uh, moves of all edge rushers. Uh, Ojo Larry has only been around now for a couple of days, again, since he was on the side with the trainers. So he's got some catching up to do. But from seeing him around here, he has been chopping at the bit. Uh, Kayvon Thibodeau, again, watch, watch the quickness that he gets out of his stance in. It's really cat-like. Many people compare it to what O.C. Minura used to have in terms of his speed off the line. Yeah, you look at the guy's speed, and that's just so important because, you know, those offensive tackles or even the linemen for that much matter is that they're all so big, and they're also good with their hands. So you got to be able to get off and get it. Where's, where's your advantage as an edge rusher? It's your speed. It's your bend. It's how you get around the corner, and then your fundamentals and techniques with your hands. So you look, a guy like Thibodeau, a guy like Ojolari on, on both of those guys on each side, you got to pick your poison here, Paul. You got to figure out who you're going to go after. So one of these guys is going to have a better year than the other because I feel like someone's going to get picked on more. You know, there were times in, oh my goodness, speak of the devil, there is the one and only O.C. Yumanura. I'll be darned. Well, I mean, you said his name and he appeared. Like, did you know he was going to be here? That's pretty cool. No, I did not. <laughs> but it's great. Awesome. And, and again, let me make something clear. Coach Brian Dable is very big on having Giants alums come of back course, to practice. Yeah. We saw the Ring of Honor inductees, the Giants putting seven members in on September 26th, Monday Night Football against the Dallas Cowboys. O.C. Minora, one of the great pass rushers in franchise history, is already in that ring. But the other day, there was Leonard Marshall, Rodney Hampton, Otis Anderson, and Joe Morris, who all came out to practice. And not only did John Mara announce that they were going into the ring, they all spoke to the team. And, and having these valuable alums come back and speak to these young folks that's something that Coach Dable is very, very um, assertive in doing. Well, you said young folks, right? So this, this is a young team. Um, not many of these guys on the team are going to know my name, but they're gonna, a lot of them are going to know Osi's name because he is fairly still young. But I feel it is, it's a great opportunity for uh, an ex-player to come in and talk about the organization, let the younger guys know how important it is to be a part of this organization, the his history of this organization. And then just the other day, be able to be introduced to four of the guys that were out of practice that day going into the ring of honor. And as a player, there is no other no other honor that you want other than to have your name in the stadium that you played at for an extended period of time and to represent the organization that you worked for for as long as they did. You know, I don't know if an O.C. now giving some pass rushing tips and you see O'Shane Zimenez, number 53, with Old Jolari, uh, Roche's there. I think that might have been Thibodeau also. And O.C. showing off some of the quickness. Look at that. He yeah, may be getting older, but <laughs> hasn't lost any speed. 
Well, you know, there is some similarity between Thibodeau and Osi on that, that first step and then also their bend and their handwork, you know, those types of things. They're taught, that's what he's talking to these guys, I'm assuming right now, is just using your hands, understanding what you're going up against. But, it, you know, it's something that they have to understand that the guy that's protecting on the other side is just as good as you with their hands. You got to find a way to get around it. You know, one of the things that the Giants had done on occasion when Banks and Taylor were here, sometimes Bill Belichick would actually line them up together on the same side. Think about... <laughs> Thibodeau and Ojolari maybe being next to each other coming off the edge. You're a tackle or a running back. Who do you pick up? Well, I think that Wink is probably going to have a little bit of wink, wink. We're going to go like this, but we're really going to go like that. I think that I think it's going to be a lot of fun if you're the Giants fan to be able to watch this defense line up and play in different type of personnel matchups. And, and really, when you talk about the National Football League on a day-to-day -day basis, it's all about matchups, offensively trying to get into a with a motion or a shift to try to get in a mismatch. Well, it's the other the other way around with defense. They try to get in a mismatch and win that one-on-one -on -one uh, matchup, and that's what the game's all about, one-on-one -on -one matchup. Jeff Beagles, thanks for joining us today. Thank you, Paul. That'll do it for this edition of the Giants Training Camp Report presented by Citizens. I'm Paul Dottino. We'll see you next time.